This is MathHeals.com, where you can find more links to math and computer science YouTube videos. Let's take a look at parametric surfaces. And look at our first problem here. Now I'm not going to actually um, graph this by hand. I'm just going to use the utility to graph it. So we've got R of UV is equal to u squared cosine v i plus u squared sine of v j plus 2u k. Now the the utility I'm going to use to graph is, is called wind plot. Um, if you uh, do a s Google search on wind plot and, and peanut, it, um, then you'll find it. It's a program is written by a, oh, a professor at some college. It's free. You can download it. Um, doesn't take much to install it. It's just a zip file. You unzip it and then you run it. I'm going to choose window three dimensions. Now I know this is kind of small. You won't be able to see all this, but I'll tell you what I'm doing. Then I'm going to click equation and choose parametric. Now, unfortunately, uh, this is looking for things in the form of TU. So their, their pattern is going to be TU. So everywhere in this formula where we have a U, we'll put in a T. So the equivalent of this will be T squared. And everywhere I have a V, I'll put in U. So T squared cosine U, I plus t squared sine uh, u j plus 2t k. So that's how we're going to plug it in. So it's a little bit, little bit confusing in that regard, but um, my cursor is sitting at x equals. So at x equals, I'm going to put in my t squared cosine u. This is your x, this is your y, and this is your z. Now it's actually uh, x of tu, like that if I were to put the, the variables in. So we got t squared cosine u. So we got t, and I'll do a caret, 2, cosine, beginning parentheses, u, closing parentheses. And the next one is t squared sine u. So t care 2 sine beginning parentheses u closing parentheses. Now the z will be um, 2t. Put in 2t. Now uh, it says t low, t high. Um, that goes from 0 to 2 pi. And you can leave that as is. Then this uh, u low and u high. I could put in um, oh um, zero. I guess is fine there. And um, let me put in ten here for the u high. And click OK. Now if I do view axis axis, let me go back to edit. Ten is a little bit too much. Let me put five in and then click OK. Now if I do page in, you see we got uh, part of the picture. So we go back to edit and um, change this to uh, 12, 12 for t-high. And it's still not looking good. Let's see, t squared cosine u plus t squared plus 2t. 2t. Boy, my eyes are bad. <laughs> I didn't put 2t for z. And click OK. OK, now I'm going to go back to edit. Change this to 12. OK. So I'm just playing with numbers a little bit. It's a free, free program, so you know there are some limitations to it. And as I, um, as I rotate it, you see 
And looking at it from the top, we got a, a circle. Which makes sense when you think about it because of the cosine and sine. We know that oftentimes gives us our circle or pattern. And then the 2u on the k um, is what causes it. Causes it to, to open out uh, like, like it does right here. Or goes like that. If I do an edit, and instead of 2t, we put 1 half t. See how it um, goes up or opens faster? Now, if I come here and put uh, 10t, see how it does that? I'm pressing my page up, page down to zoom in, and I'm using my arrow keys to to rotate the view. And you can see it pretty good there. 2t kind of opens up pretty fast if I go to edit. 2t. You can kind of see it to go clear right to the side. You can see the pattern. But anyway, that's how you can sketch it with this utility. Not the great, not the greatest utility, but um, eh, it's not bad for the price. And I'm not going to actually sketch that on the the tablet tablet here. I'm not very good with um with 3D. And let's look at our next problem. Our first our definition. Definition of parametric surface. Let x, y, and z be functions of u and v that are continuous on a domain d in the uv plane. The set of points x, y, z given by r of uv is equal to x of uv i plus y of uv j plus z of uv k. It's called a parametric surface. The equations x equals x of uv, y is equal to y of uv, and z is equal to z of uv are the parametric equations for the surface. Well, let's see how that corresponds to this problem. This one says find a rectangular equation for the surface by eliminating the parameters from the vector valued function, identify the surface, and sketch its graph. We got uh, ui plus vj plus v over 6k. Now, from our, our uh, definition, this is our x, so they're telling us x is equal to u, and this is our y, and y is equal to v, and this is our z, so z is equal to v over 6. Now, in this case, we know what v is. Right here we said v is equal to y, so we can replace the v here with y. So z is going to equal to y over 6, and uh, this is a plane. Now, I don't know how good our graphing utility are doing this, but we can try it. I'll close that. I'm going to choose window, three dimensions, and I'm going to choose uh, equation explicit. And it's asking for z equals, which we said z was equal y over 6. So I'll do y divided by 6, and press OK. And do a view axis axis. And there you see our graph. And I'm using my arrow keys to rotate it so you can see it. Again, I'm not going to actually sketch it over here, but uh, that would be our changing it to rectangular equation. Let's look at one a little harder. We got R of UV equals 9 cosine B cosine U I plus 9 cosine V sine U J plus 6 sine V K. Well, again, this is our x, this is our y, and this is our z. So basically, we got x is equal to 9 cosine v cosine u, and here we got y is equal to 9 cosine v sine u. 
And then this one we've got z is equal to 6 sine v. Well, this one we have to do in two different parts. Here we'll divide both sides by 9. So we've got x over 9 is equal to cosine v cosine u is our first part. And this part we'll divide by 9, both sides by 9. And we get y over 9 is equal to cosine v sine u. Well, we'll go ahead and square both sides. So x square, x to the second power is x squared. 9 squared is 81. Cosine v squared is cosine squared v. And cosine u squared is cosine squared u. Now, we'll do the same thing here. Square the y. So that's y squared. 9 squared is 81. Equals cosine squared v sine squared u. Now, if we got... Um, we got uh, these two equations here. We can also do the same thing on this one. So um, we'll, we'll divide both sides by 6. And then we'll square both sides. So that gives us z squared over 36 is equal to sine squared v. Okay, we got three, three equations here. We can add the left side of all three of these together. So this is our second second part. We got x squared over 81 plus y squared over 81 plus z squared over 36 equals, and we'll add the right sides together. So we got cosine squared v, cosine squared u, plus cosine squared v, sine squared u, plus sine squared v. So we've got x squared over 81 plus y squared over 81 plus z squared over 36. Now these first, uh, first two parts here, this and this, have something in common. They both have a cos cosine squared v. So I can factor that out. And that leaves us cosine squared u plus sine squared u plus sine squared v. Well, we got x squared over 81 plus y squared over 81 plus z squared over 36. Now, cosine squared plus sine squared gives you 1. So we got cosine squared v times 1, which is just cosine squared v. Then the plus sine squared v carries down. So we got x squared over 81 plus y squared over 81 plus z squared over uh, 36 equals 1. And um, I wonder if I can get the graph of this via wind plot. I know what it's looking like. Uh, and the x values is going from negative 9 to positive 9. y values is going from negative 9 to positive 9. And my z values is going from um, negative 6 to positive 6. And uh, uh, everything's an ellipse. So I believe they call that an ellipsoid, but um, I'm not the greatest at 3D. Let me go graph this. I do window three dimensions. I'll do equation implicit. And we got x squared over 81. So xx divided by 81 plus yy divided by 81 plus zz divided by 36 equals 1. And I'll click OK. And... Um, Hmm. Dimensions of the box. I probably don't want that. If I want the x to go from negative 9 to 9, y to go from negative 9 to 9, and z to at least go from uh, negative 7 to 7. And let me go back and change these to negative 10 and t 10, negative 10 and 10. One more than I need to. And click OK. Now do view axis, axis. And um, now come over here, click levels. And I'll click Auto, and click Close. Did that work? I don't see any numbers. Let me click Auto again. Uh, am I waiting long enough? Low current, high. 
keep trying. Uh, I guess I'm not gonna be able to get the graph. Well, that kind of stinks. Well, let me try. Let me try to sketch it. Let's see if I even come halfway decent on this. Okay. You may have to squint real hard um, to to imagine this. Okay, so our Y, we're going to um, 9 to negative 9, and our, or our X, I mean, and then our Y is going from 9 to negative 9. Uh, Or did that in a different color. Oh well. And then our y, Z is going up to 6. Uh, if that distance is 9, this might be about 6. And then this would be negative 6. So let me actually do that in a different color. And this is going up to 6, so it's going to come down like that, go over like that, and then huh. oh boy, that's just <laughs> that's not good. I wonder if I could just uh, okay, you got the... that's like a ball that's been squished, um, so it's ellipsoid. At this point, I couldn't get my 3D utility to do that, but anyway. What's this section called? Parametric Services. So let me save this page. And let's look at our next problem. Now those give us uh, the form of R, R of UV. And these, they want us to go the other direction. Uh, they give us the rectangular equation, want us to come up with our vector value function. Oh, actually, I guess I could have graphed this. It does it fairly well on par parametric. Um, oh, well. Yeah, let me do it. Window, three dimensions, um, equation, parametric, and uh, I'm going to have nine cosine u, u, and then um, cosine t. And then nine cosine u sine t and then six sine u six sine u and um all these will go from zero to two pi, probably the best way. And click OK. There it is. That's what I wanted to show you. So view axes, axes. And again, I can use my arrow keys to rotate it. And you can see that if I went to the side, straight to the side, you see it's a, it's an ellipse. If I go to the top, top looks like a circle. Why would the top be a circle? We're looking at only the X's and the Y's. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, well, I've closed it, but it, it makes sense if we were to look at the original. Because remember, these both had um, 81 denominator, which means that if you look at just the X's and Y's, they were a circle. So, anyway, let's look at this one. And um, close that. There we go. 
wouldn't think it have been that hard to draw that shape, but I'm not very good at drawing these. So we've got x plus y plus z is equal to 3. And um, I can solve this for z. So we've got z is equal to 3 minus x minus y. So for our um, vector valued function, um, we can let um, the x be u. Because normally this is of this form. xi plus yj plus zk. And so we can just specify that the x is equal to u. We can specify the v is, or the y is equal to v. And then z is equal to 3 minus x minus y. And we just plug in a u and v we just identified. So this is 3 minus u minus v k. And that'd be our answer. Okay, let's take a look at a little harder one. This is a cone. Not that you need to know that. We've got x is equal to the square root of 9y squared plus z squared. And um, so then, this is already solved for x. Again, what this is going to be is we'll have our x here, we'll have our y here, and we'll have our z here. Well, we know what x is. x is equal to the square root of that. So that's going to be 9y squared plus z squared, i. And y just remains y, j plus z, k. Now whenever you have a square root like that, where you have two things squared, what you're going to try to do is you're going to rewrite this as something squared plus something squared. Well, I can take the 9 and merge it with the y, and this would become 3y squared. Plus, and this is just z squared, of course, like that. Now, we're going to um, let what's inside the first parentheses here. We're going to have that equal to u cosine v. And what's inside our second parentheses will be the u sine v. Now the reason why is because if we were to put that in there, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So that's going to drop away. And uh, if we squared the u, we'd have u squared. And then square root of u squared gives us u. So we're specifying that this is going to be u when we're done. Now let me show that with, with this. So um, if I go ahead and replace that, let me say this is yj plus zk. So this is going to become 3y we said was u cosine v. So we put that in there. Plus z, which is u sine v. So u sine v squared. This is i plus y. Well, if we divide both sides by y here, we get y is equal to one third u cosine v j. And z, well, z we just said was u sine v. So we've got plus u sine v k. Well, if I do a little bit of simplifying, this becomes, square both of those, we get u squared cosine squared v plus u squared sine squared v i plus one third u cosine v j plus u sine v k. Now we can factor a u squared out. So we've got u squared times cosine squared v plus sine squared v i plus one third u cosine v j plus u sine v k. Well, cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. And uh, square root of u squared just gives us u. So this becomes ui plus one third u cosine vj plus u sine vk. And that's our answer. So.
that's not as as straightforward as on uh, as the other one in terms of changing them over. Let's look at another one of those. We got um, x squared plus y squared is equal to 36. And we don't got z at all. Um, so uh, since we don't have z incorporated in this at all, we could just uh, set z equal to one of our variables. Like I'll set, set it equal to v. Well, um, if I think of this going the, uh, the other direction, if I have room, um, we want to get a 1 over on the right side. So divide both everything by 36. We've got x squared over 36 plus y squared over 36 is equal to 1. I want to rewrite this as, um, as something squared. So I've got 1 over 36x squared plus 1 over 36y squared is equal to 1, which becomes 1 6 x to the second power plus 1 6 y to the second power equals 1. So now I got something squared plus something squared equals 1. Now remember that our um, cosine, and um, we're going to say cosine u since we already used v, cosine u squared plus sine u squared is equal to 1. Well since both of these are equal to 1, then that means we can set 1 6 x equal to cosine u and 1 6 y is equal to sine u. Multiply both sides by 6 and we got x is equal to 6 cosine u and y is equal to 6 sine u. So our final answer, we found out what x is so this becomes 6 cosine ui we found out what y is, so this becomes 6 sine u j. And we said z is just v, so this is v k. And that would be our answer. Go ahead and save this. Now let's take a look at this. We've got y is equal to x over 7. x is between 0 and 21. And it says write a set of parametric equations for the surface of revolution obtained by revolving the graph of the function about the given axis. Well, since the um, it's about the x-axis will let um, u equal to x. x is equal to u. Um, and that's because it's about the x-axis. So then our y, so x is equal to u, our y, we, um, we know what x is. x is um, u, so, and so y is equal to x over 7, so this becomes u over 7. Now we'll come back to that. Z is also going to be U over 7. Like that. Now we're revolving it. Revolving the graph about to give an axis. When we revolve it about to give an axis, we're creating a, a, a circle. So we need to put sines and cosines in here. So I have U over 7, and then I'm going to put a cosine, V, right beside it. And over here, I'll put a sine v. Because we know if we were square these, we know what that, that creates. Now, um, we say x is between 0 and 21. Um, and x is equal to u, which means that u is going to be between 0 and 21. Now our v. We're revolving it com completely around a circle, which means it's going from 0 to 2 pi. And that's our answer. Again, um, the one if we said revolve around the x-axis, that's why we let x equal to u. 
And uh, then the others have to have cosine and, v cosine and sine on them. Okay, let's look at another one of those. Not hard, but they're just a little weird. Okay, we got y is equal to x to the 8 sevenths. And x is between 0 and um, 5. And it's revolving around the x-axis again. Which means that our y and our z are going to have the cosine and sine on them. Now if we're going around a different axis, like around the y-axis, then the x and z would have the sine and cosine. Um, okay, so to begin with, x is equal to u, because we're about the x-axis. Well, we know what y is. y is equal to that. So we're going to have y is equal to u to the 8 sevenths. And z will also be a u to the 8 sevenths. Now, since it's revolving around the x-axis, then on a y and z, I need to put my sine and, and cosine. So I'm going to put my cosine v here and my sine v here. And I believe if you put sine, sine v here and cosine v here, you, you're still fine. It gives you the same, same setup. And u is going to go from 0 to 5 because x is equal to u. And v, yet again, goes from 0 to 2 pi. Because if we're going all the way around, it has to. And that would be your answer. Now the next steps uh, talk about how to find a tangent plane to a parametric surface. So let me go ahead and save this. Make sure I have room for the next problem. And um, we'll, we're going to go through these steps with an example. So let me go ahead and skip down to number 9. It says, find an equation of the tangent plane to the surface represented by the vector valued function at a given point. Um, so we're looking at a specific point that um, is, just remember the tangent line, same idea but as a tangent plane at that point. So our vector valued function is equal to 9u plus b. I plus u minus v j plus v k. And it occurs at this point 3, negative 3, 3. Now this point is x, our x, y, and z. So keep that in mind. And we want to find an equation the tangent line. Well, um, realize that when I give this point to us, this is x naught, this is y naught, and this is z naught. Now our first step says find what u and v are equal to um, at a given point. Uh, obviously I can't uh, write uh, intelligently. Um, well this is our x, this is our y, and this is our z. Which means that for our first step here, this would be 9u plus v is equal to x. And this one would be u minus v is equal to y. And this one would be v is equal to z. Well, we're given this point, so plug that in for x. So we've got 9u plus v is equal to 3. This one will be u minus v is equal to negative 3. And this one will be v is equal to 3. Well, we're trying to find out what our values of u and v are. Well, here we got u, or v. Now, we can take that and we can plug that into this equation. So we got u minus v, which is 3, equals negative 3. And take that negative 3 over, and we got negative 3 plus 3, or u is equal to 0. So we got u is equal to 0, and v is equal to 3. Okay. Step two, find the partials, um, the partial derivative of r respect to u and partial derivative of r respect to y, or v. Okay, partial respect to u. We take a look at this, the derivative of this respect to u uh, would be 9i. And the partial derivative of this respect to u, the v drops away, and then derivative of u is 1, so that's plus j. And this one doesn't have a u, so that would be a plus 0k. 
Now partial respect to V. Uh, there's a 1 before this V, so that gives us 1i or i. Before this V, there's a negative 1, so that gives us minus j. And before this V, we have a 1, so that gives us plus 1k. And those are our partials. Third step, find a cross product of those. So we're going to take uh, this vector. I guess I should put the vector notation on that. I'm real sloppy about that at times. And we're going to find a cross product of those two. So we're going to put ijk across the top. And uh, our, our partial with respect to u is first, so I'll put that on my second row. So I got 9, 1, and 0. Remember, we only put the what's in front of our ij and k's. This one would be 1, negative 1, 1. Okay, so we'd have um, i times, and remember you cross out the row and column it's in, and what isn't crossed out is what goes in your determinant here. So this would be 1, 0, negative 1, 1. Minus j, and we cross out that row and that column, and what isn't crossed out is what goes right here. Plus k, and again we cross out the row and column it's in, what isn't crossed out goes here, 9, 1, 1, negative 1. Well, uh, 1 times 1 is 1, so that gives us i, or 1i I should say. Uh, 9 times 1 is 9, so we got minus 9j, Zeros cause things to drop away. This one we got 9 times negative 1, which is negative 9, minus 1 times 1. That gives us a negative 10. K. And that's our cross product. Now step 4 says plug in your u and v values into the cross product. And this gives you your normal vector. Well notice, we don't have any u's and v's left, do we? After we did the partials, they all disappeared. So um, this is going to remain as is. So we got 1i minus 9j minus 10k. But if we had u's and v's here, we would plug in what we identified up here. The u is equal to this, v is equal to this. Okay. Now from our formula, the a is what's for i, b is what's for a j, and c is what's for, for a k. So this is a, this is b, and this is c. So from our formula, we got a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught is equal to zero. Now that's our initial point. Our initial point was uh, three negative three three. So that's our x naught, y naught, z naught. So let's plug in everything we found. A we said was 1 times x minus x naught, which is 3. B is negative 9 times y minus y naught, so y minus a negative 3. C is negative 10, and then z minus z naught, and z naught was 3. So that gives us x minus 3 minus 9 times y plus 3 minus 10 times z minus 3 equal to 0. And that's basically our answer. We could simplify it, put it in different forms, but that's the gist of what we're, what we're trying to find. So let me go ahead and save that. And let's talk about our next item. Area of a parametric surface. Um, let S be a smooth parametric surface. And um, R of uv is equal to x of uvi plus y of uvj plus z of uvk. R, u, R, x, y, and z are all um, uh, vectors. Defined over an open region, d, in the uv plane. 
If uh, each point of this on the surface S corresponds to exactly one point in the domain D, then the surface area of S is given by this formula. And you can see we find our partial of R respect to U, partial of R respect to V, find a cross product, find the magnitude of it, and then find our integ integral. And our formulas for the um, partial derivative with respect to U and V for of R is down below. So let's look at our first problem. We got r is equal to six u i minus v j plus v k and uh, u is between zero and two and v is between zero and four. The instructions say find the area of the surface, find the surface area over the given region. Well, let's see what all we have to find. Uh, we need to find our partials. So partial respect to u. Uh, it's going to give us 6i. Derivative of 6u is 6. This doesn't have a um, u. So this becomes plus 0j. And this one doesn't have a u. So that's plus 0k. Now our partial respect to v. This one doesn't have one. So that's 0i. This becomes negative j, and this one becomes plus k. Now we need the cross product. And again, we have our i, j, k across the top. And uh, the partial respect to u is first, so I got 6, 0, 0. Partial respect to v is second, so we got 0, negative 1, 1. So then we got i. Cross out the row and column it's in, and we're left with 0, 0, negative 1, 1. Minus j, these alternate, that's plus, minus, plus. Cross out the row and column it's in, and we got 6, 0, uh, 0, 1. Plus k. And cross out the row and column it's in, and you got 6, 0, 0, negative 1. Well, that drops away. Um, this one. 6 times 1 is 6, so we've got minus 6j. And this one, um, 6 times negative 1 um, gives us negative 6k. Okay, now we need the magnitude of that. Now magnitude, you just take what's in front of your i, j's, and k's and square them, and then put it under a square root. So we're going to have negative 6 squared plus negative 6 squared, which gives us 36 plus 36 under the square root, which is square root of 72, which gives us 6 times 6 times 2, which gives us 6 square root of 2. Okay, so we found all of that. So now we're ready to find our integral. This is going to go from u is equal to 0, so u is equal to 2, and v is equal to 0, to v is equal to 4. This is our surface area, it is equal to 6 square root of 2 dv du. Well, I can put the 6 square root of 2 out in front, so we don't have to worry about it. And then I'm left with the invisible 1 here. And so um got u is equal to zero to u is equal to two. The integral of uh in respect to v of one is just v. And then we're going from zero to four. So if I plug those in we're gonna have uh four minus zero, which is four, and I can put the four out in front. So that gives us twenty four square root of two. And then the integral of, um, there's a 1 left, so the integral of 1 is 1u or u from u is equal to 0 to u is equal to 2. And if we plug those in, we got 24 square root of 2 times 2 minus 0, which ends up giving us 48 square root of 2. And that's our surface area. 
So let me go ahead and save that. And uh, let's look at our next problem. In our last one. Okay, so we've got R is equal to 9 sine U cosine B I plus 9 sine U sine B J plus 9 cosine u k and uh, I'll, I'll come back to these well, actually let me go ahead and run them down here u is between 0 and pi and b is between 0 and 2 pi okay going back to our formula we need to find a partial spec to u, partial spec to v. So that's our first step. So partial respect to u. The 9 and the cosine v just carry along, and, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So this becomes 9 cosine u cosine v i. And taking partial spec to u, um, sine, sine u again becomes cosine u. So this becomes plus 9 cosine u sine v j. And uh, then the derivative of cosine is negative uh, sine. So this becomes um, negative 9 sine u k. Now partial respect to v. Uh, the derivative of cosine v is negative sine v, so this becomes negative 9 sine u sine v i. And the uh, derivative of uh, sine v uh, gives us cosine v, so this becomes 9 cosine u cosine v. Remember, remember the variable I'm not working with, I ignore completely on this. And then the derivative of, uh, there is no v here, so uh, that just goes to 0. So this becomes 0k. Okay. okay, well, this says we need to cross product of those. So let's find that. So that's going to be i, j, k. And then uh, a partial respect to u is first, so we put that down. So we'll have 9 cosine u cosine v. We'll have 9 cosine u sine v. And we'll have negative 9 sine u. And then uh, the second one, we'll have a negative 9 sine u sine v. 9 cosine u cosine v. And this will be a 0. Okay, so we're going to have, um, cross out the, um, those are vectors, I'm pretty sloppy about that, okay, cross out the row and column it's in, and uh, then what's left is what goes in this determinant, so we've got 9 cosine u sine v, negative 9 sine u, Negative 9, oops, try it again, my eyes are getting off, 9 cosine u sine v, this would be 9 cosine u cosine v, 0, minus j, cross out the row and column it's in, and that leaves us 9 cosine u cosine v, negative 9 sine u, Negative 9 sine u sine b, 0. 
plus k and again cross out the row and column it's in and we're left with 9 cosine u cosine b 9 cosine u sine b negative 9 sine u sine b and 9 cosine u cosine b okay well that goes away and then minus this well this is a negative already so that becomes a plus so we get 81 um, what do we get sine u cosine v something's wrong here I think I wrote something down wrong. 9 cosine u sine b minus 9 u negative or 9 cosine u cosine v I think I screwed up up here. Um, partial respect to V. Let me double check this. Um, respect to V. So that'd be a negative sine. Okay. Respect to V, this would be cosine of V, but that's sine U. So that's sine U. Probably better if I went off a script on these. Uh, so this would be sine U. Which means that, um, what does that mean? This would be sine. And uh, this one would be sine. Okay. How did I know that was wrong? Well, if if you have three different trig functions that are completely different, you're never going to be able to combine them together. So I, I knew I was headed wrong. Okay, so that, that times that is zero. Minus this times this, and that's a negative, so a negative and negative becomes positive. 9 times 9 is 81. Sine u times sine u is sine squared u. Cosine vi. That looks better. Okay, minus this times this drops away, and then minus this times this, uh, well, this times this is positive with a negative in front, with a negative in front, and there becomes a plus. Um, now let me think of the signs here, see if I've messed them up again. Okay, this times this, minus that. Yeah, that's right. Seems weird, but... <laughs> um, and then um, 9 times 9 is 81. Sine u times sine u is sine squared u. Sine v. J. Plus. And I uh, got this times this. Which 9 times 9 is 81. And we got sine u cosine u. Sine u cosine u. Cosine v times cosine v is cosine squared v. Plus, because uh, we, it's actually minus this. These multiply together minus this times this, but uh, this is a negative, so that becomes a plus. So 81 sine u cosine u sine squared v. This is k. Okay, so this simplifies a little bit. We've got 81 sine squared u. Cosine v i plus 81 sine squared u sine v j. And here we can factor out what they have in common. They have an 81 sine u cosine u, which leaves us with cosine squared plus sine squared. Okay. Which gives us 81 sine squared u cosine v i 
plus 81 sine squared u sine v j plus 81 and this is equal to 1 so we got 81 sine u cosine u k okay that's our that's our uh, cross product well this says then we need to find a magnitude of that so the magnitude of the cross product is going to be equal to the square root of 81 sine squared u cosine v squared plus 81 sine squared u sine v squared plus 81 sine u cosine u squared. Well, they all have an 81 in them, so I can uh, bring that 81 out in front as 81 squared. And let's see what we have left then. Uh, square this, that gives us sine to the fourth u cosine squared v plus square this that gives us sine to the fourth u sine squared v plus square this and this and we get sine squared u cosine squared u now I can take that 81 out in front and then we got square root now as we look at these first two they both have a sine to the fourth so I can factor that out we got sine fourth u, and that leaves us cosine squared v plus sine squared v plus sine squared u cosine squared u. Which gives us 81. Cosine squared v plus sine squared v goes to 1, and that leaves us sine to the fourth u plus sine squared u cosine squared u. Well now they both have a um, sine squared in common so I can factor that out and that leaves us sine squared u plus cosine squared u which sine squared u plus cosine squared u is equal to 1. So we've got 81 square root of sine squared u which ends up giving us 81 sine u. Okay, let me write that down. There we go. And let me save this because we're ready to go to the next page. Oops. And what problem are we even on? Uh, we're on 11. So 11 continued. So we ended up with our magnitude of the cross product equal to 81 sine u. Okay, so um, we're down to this point, so now we need to do our setup. Um, there it is. Okay. We said V is going to go from 0. This is our surface area. V is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And U is going to go from 0 to pi. And we're putting this in the middle. So we got 81 sine U DU DV. Well, the 81 we can put clear out in front v is equal to 0 to v is equal to 2 pi and the integral of sine is negative cosine so we've got negative cosine u from u is equal to 0 to u is equal to pi I can put the negative clear out in front so I don't have to worry about it v is equal to 0 to v is equal to 2 pi and now I can plug in these values so I'll put in pi for u I got cosine pi minus and I'll put in u or 0 for the u so we've got cosine 0. This gives us negative 81 
b is equal to 0 to v is equal to 2 pi. Uh, cosine of pi is negative 1 minus cosine of 0 is 1 dv. Now that gives us negative 1, negative 1 is negative 2, and I'll put it clear out in front. So we've got negative 81 times negative 2. Um, v is equal to 0 to v is equal to 2 pi dv. It gives us, what is that, 162. And then the integral of this is v from v is equal to 0 to v is equal to 2 pi. So I got 162, I'll plug in 2 pi for v, minus, and I'll plug 0 in for v. Which ends up giving us uh, 162 times 2, 324 pi. And that's our answer. So let me save that. Again, when you're doing some of these problems that are more complex like that, um, you're going to have to end up probably using the, the fact that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So if you don't end up getting something the same, you know, like a sine squared or cosine squared of some form, like that one mistake I made, then you, you, that's pretty well an indication. You need to go back and find out where you messed up. I wouldn't say that's always true, but most of them are designed to come out nice like that. So let me go ahead and save this.